Thanks for tuning in here on Prime Sports Network as we preview another week in the NASCAR Cup Series as Iowa Speedway makes a debut in the Cup Series. Wow. This is as good as the time as any to make sure to check in here because we're going to give you the very best data we can to get you prepared for this race since there's never been a race there before in the Cup Series. So we've got a lot of uh, handicapping tools that can help you prep for the race. How's it going, CJ? It's going pretty good. Very excited for another short track here at Iowa. Yeah, what do you... <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at some of the uh, old Xfinity races at the track, and I, I just remember the first thing I was noticing was just saying to myself, "This is a short track. I mean, why isn't why aren't the cars right next to each other? I mean, isn't that what the whole idea of a short track is? That you know you're bumping and next to everybody. It's like I just it just it was weird. It's like okay, if that's what we're in store for." Uh, it's probably not going to be very good. And I hear they're not very happy already. They are not very happy already. So uh, you referenced the cars not being side by side. And I think that we've got uh, even more that's going to be driving them not to be side by side this weekend because um, the the surface at Iowa was pretty old. I uh, had some patching and everything that needed to be done and they committed to repaving it. But then I guess apparently during the winter, it got a little bit too cold. They had to quote unquote ran out of time uh so basically the drivers are all showing up and there's there's one lap re or one lane repave on the inside maybe half a lane up into the the second one um and you're just going to get we saw it in north Wil wilkesboro you're just going to get more grip out of the new pavement so everybody's going to be running down there and you're just not going to be able to get the grip on the outside so i think that we are in store for a single line kind of day with not a whole heck of a lot of passing. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I, it, we talk about the, the short tracks and liking short track racing when it is side by side. Bristol produces that. Um, Martinsville can produce that on good days. Richmond tends to generally not do that as we've, as we've talked about a lot. And unfortunately, uh, as one of our handicapping tools, we're gonna clue you in on here. Um, the best track to compare these guys to is, in fact, Richmond. So uh, just put on your seatbelts. I, I anticipate this one being a really exciting race. Yeah, this is the. This is why. I mean, I don't think it's. I don't think I have to guess, like who owns the track. <laughs> uh, and that's what is unfortunate about the series and 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 what. What, what they do to themselves because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, why are you going to Iowa? It's not like you're going to LA or Chicago and you're trying to market your sport to an audience that you need. I, I don't see the need for the Iowa audience. I I just don't. I mean, I guess they're, what are they thinking that it's close enough to Chicago or something? I, I mean, I don't know. I just, yeah, I just, I, there's a dearth of racing in, in the Midwest. Uh, the Knoxville nationals are what? 30, five-ish miles away, 30 miles away or so. So there's some pretty good racing that goes on. There's a lot of good racing that happens in the Midwest. There's just not the, the big name series coming there. Uh, Iowa does have, if you want to go the, the fuel route, I mean, IndyCar can do that with um, ethanol, you know, being a corn-based uh, fuel. Um, so there's that, obviously, uh, Iowa being a known a lot for the corn and, and, and all of that good stuff and the farming and all that good stuff. Um, so there's good racing. NASCAR just isn't there. IndyCar has been at Iowa Speedway a bit, you know, Xfinity trucks, et cetera, for a short time. Um, so yeah, it's not a, it's not a big name market on one of the coasts, but I, I'm generally okay with that. I just think that there are probably better tracks um, that aren't owned by NASCAR that should probably get a fair shake at producing some, better on track excitement and you know jury is still out we'll see how sunday and this weekend goes but um my hopes um you know maybe my hopes being extreme as low as they are is a good thing because then maybe on sunday if if, if something good happens then i'll be i'll be surprised and happy i'll go with that uh yeah they, they've looked to get the chicago street race the illinois race mm -hmm. the iowa race the nashville race just at St. louis well, as well Nashville, which, but... you know, right right about there yeah uh, so 
type of area too. So, so I, you know, all right. Uh, so yeah, and and I, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what, I'm also gonna throw in uh, Dover and Bristol as a little bit of a, a, you know, look into who could succeed here since it's a concrete track. So I think that could come into play. Um, so, but again, just a little bit. Um, and I, I think there are some drivers that actually have done well with all three. Uh, and we're going to get into that. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about the 20 races and who won it at Iowa in the Xfinity Series. But before we do that, uh, just going to go over some viewer comments that we've had uh, over the last uh, week or so. Uh, on Prime Sports Network, Next Gen Fun Kids. Great job, guys. I have been handicapping race odds for myself for over 20 years, and I don't know if I ever dived this deep. Sincerely, new subscriber. Excellent. Thank you, Next Gen Fun Kids. Great. That's what we want to hear. Uh, CD, this is on Mystery Carson. CD, Ryan. Now, I'm assuming this is a bit of sarcasm. Uh, Ryan, I can't tell sarcasm in texting, though. Ryan Priest again shows why he deserves respect <laughs> and a top tier cup series ride starting 32nd. Go get him, Ryan. I remember that comment. Yep. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Sarcasm, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Wayne uh, Bilo. Oh, wow. I love you guys. Hope you don't leave here. You're the man. Great show. And Wayne has commented because last week when I was uh, doing the, the, uh, uh, qualifying and practice video, I did mention, I said, look, uh, we need the subscribers here on Mystery Caution. Uh, we, we told, we, anybody who's with us early on knows the whole, you know, kind of roller coaster ride we were on because we only put the channel together because we thought Eric was going to be with us uh, as he made the transition over to the IndyCar series. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Eric was not able to do it and that came at the very last second and so we kind of had a scramble and because uh, we never would have put the channel together if it wasn't for Eric. So um, so that's why CJ and I decided to get back together again, which we had uh, previously done shows uh, before uh, for several years before Eric came on board. And uh, so we're trying to build up the channel. But the problem is, I was like, you know, we're getting an awful lot of uh, subscribers on Mystery Caution, which is great with the Saturday qualifying uh, reports. But I'm not seeing that the, the, the subscribers go up enough and that's a lot of n traffic numbers that I could use at Prime Sports Network where I get paid for advertising. So I was saying uh, we might have to test that out one of these weeks where I might just be moving everything. I might, I might move that qualifying show over to Prime Sports, Prime Sports, see if I get the same traffic. And if I do, I might have to stay there. But if the subscribers keep going up, which I'm, well, if the subscribers do eventually go up, and they are they're doing okay, but they can be a lot better. Again, if you have like 500 or 800 views, which we've had on the qualifying, and we're getting like two or three subscribers, that's just not enough. I mean, I got to get more than that. CJ and I, we have to get more than that. So anyway, that's what I was saying. Not that we were leaving or anything like that, just that we might leave the channel and then do it, do it opposite. This show would say then... I might still do that. Uh, not this week, but maybe next week. I'll give it another week, but then next week I'll take a look at how things are, and if maybe I might just switch it over. But, yeah, we're not going anywhere. Uh, and then uh, David Peel. Now, I didn't understand this too much because he never responded to me, but David Peel said, Dude, I love listening to races broken down based on data and odds value, but you're so missing something. I had to subscribe to comment. And then I said to David, basically, well, that's what the comment section's for. Go ahead. I mean, you know, let me know. What, what is it? And I haven't heard back from him. So I don't know. Maybe he'll get back to us and let us maybe know. we're missing Ryan Priest. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> should have mentioned him. <laughs> Either that or, I don't know, maybe he, he didn't realize that we had a whole bunch of other stuff we talked about on this video that, again, I referenced and we put a, description, a link in the description. So a lot of the stuff that we have time for today, I do not talk about on the qualifying video uh, qualifying video. Yes, I'll talk about a little of things that we talk about here today, but those videos are shorter and mostly just to update uh, the uh, qualifying speeds, practice speeds, and how it correlates to our initial analysis of the race and so forth. Unfortunately, and this is another thing I just did not, I do not like, and I don't understand why Vegas hasn't caught up yet. For whatever reason, 
once cup once qualifying and practice is over they are not putting the odds up now i know why uh they used to do it or used to not do it before because they would wait for the xfinity series race to be over I would get that because in the past they used to always have like, you know, five or six cup drivers in the Xfinity series. And who knows? Something might happen and you don't want to screw around with the odds and cup drivers are there. So I get I would get that. But we're not seeing that anymore. You see, like a one or two cup drivers at the most. And sometimes they're not even there in the Xfinity race. I just don't see the reason to wait until Sunday morning to post the odds when qualifying in a lot of times is over by 12 the next day. I mean, it's 24 hours. I got to wait for odds to come out because you're waiting for some Xfinity series race. And how does that, I don't know how to say how that adds up to why the cup race uh, odds should be different. So I don't know uh, if that is the reason I think they have to uh, kind of, you know, somebody has got to let them know. I mean, come on, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I've noticed um, same thing with Formula One. They'll have the odds out very early in the week for anybody that wants to go extremely early. But then as you get closer to qualifying or practice, they start taking them down. So it's almost like you have to decide who you're going to go with Monday or Tuesday. Um, and yeah, the, the odds, Formula One, t very different story than trying to make money here in NASCAR. Um, but again, if you miss it, <clears throat> Like it could still be Wednesday and, and they're still a day away from getting to the track. And, and like it's the last couple hours that you have of those early odds to be able to get anything. So um, I don't know. Are they putting more analytics into it before they decide on where things are going to land? And it just takes longer to get through that or not. But I yeah, know. I agree. Oh. It, it feels like the odds more recently for racing come out later and later every single week. Yeah, because I was looking at when I was going over it. Yes, because uh, again, it was a late qualifying last week on saturday yeah. so i waited and I, I did it last on saturday night so right, let me get this out of the way i've got the time uh, it's it's much better to do that sometimes than do it on a sunday uh even though again you can get the odds which is the benefit so when i was looking at it hey, let me just see see if the odds are off. of course they're not and i noticed the f1 odds were up on DraftKings. so i was like oh mm -hmm. see f1's got the damn odds up their qualifying started at what three o'clock or four o'clock last week, yep. something like yep, that. Two or three. Yep. Yep. Uh, exactly. So anyway, I don't know. I, I just hope you know maybe they're. Uh, we'll see. You know, I'll 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 check it out again. But it's just not. Again, I, I just wish that they would. Uh, I, I just don't see the reason why it should take more than uh, a couple hours after qualifying ends. But you're right. Maybe for whatever reason, whatever data that they're going through, um, they got a. It, it takes five, six, seven hours to put the odds back, but. I mean, in this industry, you should be able to have those odds up like half hour after qualifying ends. So, yep, I'd agree. okay, so let's go ahead and break this down. And we don't, of course, have any past performances to talk about. So we're going to talk about the tracks We're going to, uh, and, and, and try to figure out what we can get away with here. So when we're when we're looking at the uh, odds, let me see if I can. Uh, where, are, where are they? Here they are. So it, so we've got the odds here and. You see, Christopher, now I'm not surprised that Bell's the favorite, but here's the thing. See, Bell's at four to one, uh, and then there's Larson, of course, uh, and then the rest. Okay, so uh, here's, I'm just going to give you a quick example. So we, we, we can understand why Bell's four to one. He's a two-time Xfinity Series champ here. Uh, he, his average finish is 4.4 in five races. He was first twice, second twice, and he led over 600 laps in the five races. That's pretty impressive. Nobody has that kind of resume and in Xfinity series, mind you, then Bell. Okay, if that's why you're doing it, okay. But then I look at Kozlowski and I go, well, Kozlowski's a three-time Xfinity series champ at Iowa. And in seven Xfinity series races at Iowa, he has seven top tens. Six of those are top fives. Three of those are wins. Not as many laps, half as much. And an average finish of 3.0. So why on earth would I take Christopher Bell at 4-1 to one when I can get Brett Kozlowski at 12-1? to one? Yeah, I, <laughs> that, that's an impossible question to answer because I completely agree with you. Um, I, I'm actually surprised Bell is the favorite. Um, Larson, you know, he's pretty much going to be second every single week, but... Why wouldn't Hamlin, and, and granted, you know, Hamlin doesn't have the same 
win record at this track as um, Bell. But when you look at the races that we've run on, Hamlin's been so dominant on the short track so far. Here we are coming oh, yeah. to another short track. Sure. Um, I didn't even get to him yet. Yes. Like, <laughs> so, so again, like I, I is the lack of data causing opportunity for folks? I think Keselowski certainly by those, by that measure should be um, up there. I think Chris Busher, a, a former Xfinity winner at this track as well, should be up there. Um, we'll, we'll see how it plays out, but I, I don't know. I, I mean, that's the only reason that Bell's a favorite, right? Is based on his past yeah. history here in the Xfinity yeah, series. He won two of the last three race Xfinity races at the track. And, yeah. You know, more recent, but still completely different car, completely different competition. Yes. Five, six years ago, um, the track is now repaved at least one lane. Um, so like, I, I don't know. Enough has changed to make me think that just because he won two of the last three in Xfinity six years ago, five and six years ago, uh, means that he's going to automatically be at the front and a clear cut favorite over Kyle Larson. I mean, two points ahead of Larson there. It's, I don't know. Yeah. Because that's it. Because uh, sixth at Richmond, 10th uh, at Bristol, if you want to throw that in. So I don't see any, I don't see anything like Hamlin. Okay. Like you said, Hamlin wins Richmond. Everybody knows they know Richmond is the most, uh, similar track. Okay. So it's not, they don't know. It's not that they don't know this. They know this. And if you want to throw in concrete, Hamlin won both concrete races, Bristol Dover, and he did it impressively. So he's won on the concrete. He's won at Richmond. And this is a concrete track, and it's the most similar to Richmond. And Denny Hamlin is double, basically, almost. It's 7-1. to one. I don't know why, for any reason, you wouldn't take Denny Hamlin just on the Richmond thing alone. I mean, he's so good at that track. This track was de this track in Iowa was designed uh, purposefully to be similar to Richmond. Um, rough rough surfaces as well as you pointed out he's able to get it done at um the inside lane is going to have more grip so if he's able to qualify up front i just don't see how people get around whoever's up front but i have a feeling hamlin's going to be one of the ones that is up there so um yeah for for getting twice the odds of favorite teammate christopher bell who's been pretty inconsistent as well <laughs> compared to hamlin I, I think the the choice is pretty obvious there let me see where they got Bell with the futures. No, he's still seven to one. So, um, and look, I, I feel good because I already I did one of those parlays in a golf tournament. I think it was with Scotty Scheffler because he's like the favorite every week. He's like a you know he's worse than Larson odds. You know he's like mm -hmm. three to one every week, and I'm like all right, you know I don't want to put money on, it, so I'll do a parlay. And I did a, I did a parlay. I forget what it was, but I did it with Blaney and Bell, and he won. And now I'm sitting pretty where I got Bell and Blaney at 500 bucks if they win the championship. Uh, I don't have to do anything, but everybody knows I, I picked Bell to win the championship this year, which is my point. And and then throw in the fact that. Uh, I think everybody also knows that Christopher Bell has, and that he's got that car. His team has got that car really, really fast. And yet it's not like he's leading the points. It's not like he's got four wins. We're leading in wins. Uh, so yeah. That... I wonder, I wonder if it's because more so because of his win at Phoenix than anything else. So this is, you know, you could almost throw Phoenix, you know, Phoenix is a mile long, so it's longer. It's got different types of corners. There's at least one that's got similar banking to Iowa. And he was exceptionally fast there. And that's why he's getting great odds at the championship as well, because he's he's consistently been good at Phoenix. So maybe maybe that track comparison more so than anything is pushing him to be the favorite just because of how, you know, how strong he was uh, and has been at Phoenix in recent seasons. So yeah, look, if Denny Hamlin was the favorite and he was four to one, we would be like, okay. So the fact that you're getting seven to one, even though it's seven to one, I see no reason for because I don't see any way Denny Hamlin's odds are going to get higher. Uh, so no. <laughs> yeah, so go after Denny Hamlin now and take the seven. It could end up if he qualifies well, he could end up five to one, four to one, that kind of range. 
So go after Hamlin now. Go after Trek. Uh, excuse me, Kozlowski now as well. Now look, if Kozlowski doesn't practice to qualify well, he could be eighteen to one. But the fact is that if he doesn't practice to qualify well, he's probably not going to win the race. So I would because what do you think? Do, do you because we go over the track position odds, you know, or or numbers each week. We don't have them here. So what would your guess be as far as? Is this going to be something where you, you're going to more than likely have to qualify in the top 10 kind of deal? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I think your winner is definitely coming out of the top 10, unless you get some kind of crazy thing at the end with a bunch of um, overtime tries, uh, you know, weird things, weird timing of cautions throughout, and, and most particularly in that last stage that might enable some folks to, to go off of strategy. If that doesn't happen, you know, barring that, I think you win. You have to qualify inside the top ten, maybe even inside the the first um, three rows. I would say maybe top five ish. Yeah, and and definitely because of what you talked about. Yeah, with uh, how hard it's going to be to pass here. So, yeah, just taking a look at the here are the Xfinity track position winners, and check this out. Since 2013, all the way to the last race in 2019, you have 11th and 6th, and, and even you want to throw in 5th, the rest of them are the first two rows. Mm-hmm. It's 2, two, even, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 3, 3. Even if you go down to the ARCA section of that page and the NASCAR KN section of that page, just look at how many of them are inside the top five. There you go. All of them here since 2016. Yeah. Top five, all of them. What is the difference between the Arca here, this Arca Menard series, and this Arca Menard series East? What is East? What is that about? National versus uh, regional. So uh, the regional regionals have their own championships, and you can also compete nationally. You can go East and West, uh, just mainly less travel, lower budgets, et cetera, save costs, but still be able to race. Okay. All right. So th- th- immediately, Hamlin and Kozlowski become bargains. I think Elliot's a bargain, too. Elliot mm-hmm. is down here at 18 to 1. And he's raced four times in Xfinity Series, all top 10s, runner up, um, 5.8 average finish. Uh, but more importantly, fifth at Richmond, uh, eighth Bristol, fifth Dover. So all solid numbers. No wins anywhere, but all solid numbers at 18 to 1. That I'd have to say, yeah, why not take advantage of Chase Elliott at 18 to 1 when, uh, when, when he's been pretty much there? He's, he's there for, for you know, a little luck here or there, and, and maybe he could, he could win. So I think he's a bargain. Yeah, I think Elliott's a great choice as well. And we talked about him last week, just very quietly and methodically coming up to uh, the top and, and, and getting really, really good points. I mean, he's at second in points after uh, Sonoma now behind uh, Kyle Larson, his teammate. So uh, 547 points versus uh, Larson's 561. Um, so yeah, Elliot's been getting the job done very much so recently. So definitely someone that you want to take into account. Yeah, because if, it, if, if you look, they don't know what they're doing here or they don't know what to do either because, you, look, everybody is – all these drivers are so bunched up. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11, 12, 13. I mean, it's just like they don't know. So um, in that respect, uh, I got I, 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 I'll point out another one, and that would be Truex. So he's 10 to 1. So that's a good number because, once again, let's take a look at the tracks. Fourth at Richmond led 228 laps, so he was the best car at Richmond because Hamlin led 17 laps when he won. So uh, it wasn't like he dominated. Trex was the one that dominated mm-hmm. but didn't win. Second at Bristol, third at Dover. Again, if you want to put the put the, put the uh, asphalt in there. So uh, and he hasn't won yet, so he's also overdue. So yeah, so I think Truex is not bad as well. Um, which is why I, I, I'd rather just go the route of taking, of just staying away from the favorites because nobody knows. They just don't. So why would I, why would I go with a favorite this week when nobody really, really knows? When I've got really good options here, starting with Hamlin. 
Yeah, I would start with Hamlin and work your way down, to be quite honest with you. And, and Truex and, and Elliot were both, you know, before I even looked at the 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 Xfinity stats, the, um, you know, I, I, I remember, obviously, Richmond, obviously, because it's fresh in mind, but, like, Again, Heli, Elliot and, and Truex both immediately popped into my mind when I knew that we were going to Iowa. Both have been exceptional on short tracks. Joe Gibbs Racing, in particular, has been pretty good on short tracks in, in for years. Um, Hamlin especially been good at Richmond. There was a time, as we mentioned before, where Truex couldn't lose on a short track after it took him so long to finally get his first win. And it seemed like he couldn't stop winning on them. Um, he's been in the mix for wins. He was just there last week at Sonoma, uh, despite the problems that he ended up uh, or that he had at the beginning of the race, didn't have a good starting position. So very tough to come forward there. He's So he's driving really well. He's just got to get over the mistakes and have a little bit of luck come his way. And this might be a track where his skills and his approach to racing actually really pay off for him. So I, I could see him and Hamlin being very top choices. We kind of skipped over <clears throat> the Fords of Logano and Blaney. Um, you know, we, we talked about it a lot with Eric in the past where when you come to a new track, Joey Logano almost has to be oh, top. They, they've Go caught ahead. up because that's why he's eight to one yeah exactly that's the only right. reason he's eight to one <laughs> they have caught up they now know that they, they are not yeah. going to be fooled again <laughs> there's no other reason for joey legato to be eight to one <laughs> completely agree but yeah i mean if you look back at the recent history of any time we've introduced a new track it's inevitable that joey legato has been in victory lane um, I don't know how that plays out given a short track modeled after Richmond when Denny Hamlin's. Been he was so second. Cool, but and Richmond. You know, yeah, but very good point. Yeah, absolutely great point. So, um, yeah, there's no reason to go with Bell at three to one wow. uh, on a completely unknown basis when you could, you know, put half as much money on on two of these guys and, and still make out the same. Yeah, and and Blaney, uh, he he won he won the race once in the Xfinity Series. He won a truck race. And runner-up in a truck race. Uh, he uh, had raced five times in Xfinity Series, all five top tens, three top fives, and uh, the runner-up win. Average 5.4. So he's really good at this track in the Xfinity Series. And I just kind of, again, I know my my teams, my drivers, and so I know when, my, when they're down and I know when they're up. And I get the feeling after what I've seen the last couple of weeks, Ryan Blaney's back. I, I you could just tell that he's, he's kind of, he realizes what's going on now, and it's time to kind of get going here. And uh, he had a really good car. He had the fastest car in, in practice qualifying uh, mm -hmm. last week. And that was uh, surprising, especially for a Ford, but uh, really surprising. And, and he, it, the only thing I think that really happened to Blaney was he just, you know, it was a sequence race. That, that's, that's what it was. It was just, you never knew, you didn't know who was going to win, who, who, who's, who was going to be the smartest. And big surprise, Kyle Larson's team was the smartest once again, which goes to show you that it's not, not all about the driver. Uh, Kyle Larson is very fortunate. He, he has not It's sort of like the Jimmy Johnson. That I think Kyle Larson. It's one thing about Larson that he's got going for him is he's got like the the, the kind of backing for his team that Jimmy Johnson had when he was winning championships. It was never all about Jimmy Johnson. We all knew that, but it was all Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Eventually, it was all right. Chad Canals, but it still was Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. It's Kyle Larson. He's got a great team, and without that team, he is not doing what he's doing. It's not like he's got twelve wins or anything like that. Anyway, we still know he's a great driver. We still know he might be the best in the series. But the fact is, is uh, it, that that's a lethal combination when you have one of the better drivers with easily the best team. Well, yeah. I mean, we've talked about in past seasons how many races Blaney's team has lost for him, whether that be on the pits, in mm -hmm. the pits themselves, or just mistakes on strategy, whatever. Uh, and unfortunately, it happened again uh, two weeks ago. Not well. You could argue it happened at Sonoma as well because they got out Fox by the Hendrick decision there for Kyle Larson to pit when they did. But <clears throat> I mean, he was a lap away from winning the week before and ran out of fuel. That's another team issue right? yeah that, that was he, nuts and, that was he crazy. should have been in victory lane but to your point he, he and the car have the speed and they've been showing uh you know that they're capable of winning and it's got to be clicking in his head now because there are yeah. only 10 races left uh to be able to win his way in and a uh, truex um you know i would say even truex at this point isn't safe and uh, he's been knocked out before because he hasn't had a win um which is unfortunate as well but we've got one two three four five six seven 
uh, spots available for uh, first time winners still so far this year with 10 races left. And as competitive as this season has been, there are only three drivers that have multiple victories so far. Yeah. Um, I, I, I could see us winding up with 16 different winners still by the time we get there. So Blaney has really got to get going here. All right. So, and then, uh, as, so yeah, so as, as th those are, I think are the best, I think we went over them in my opinion. Uh, you take a look at the rest of them and you have uh byron i mean the one thing that pops off is you know 11 to 1 and that's not bad for byron he has won here before he's won here with a truck uh as well seventh at richmond this year uh he's got three wins um you got gibbs a two-time arca champ at this racetrack um but i i didn't really again he hasn't won yet and uh i i you know i i don't know i just think it's uh we know he's going to win. We know he's better this year than last year, but I, th I just think his numbers, it's almost like I think they're giving him too much respect. Like they're, all right, he's going to win, so the numbers are going to be low. And I just, I honestly don't think that that's the way, as a handicapper, you should handicap. I think it's, I'd rather just be like, all right, if you're going to lower his odds like that and he's never won, then I'll let him beat me the one time. But I'm just not going to chase him. Sort of like the Reddick stuff we've been going through when he's, Price down to seven to one or something like that as his third choice or something. If he's going to beat me, he's going to beat me, but I'm not going to chase it. Um, uh, so yeah. So I, and then Reddick. Speaking of Reddick, uh, I don't know. I don't see much there. Didn't have good success in Xfinity Series. Tenth at Richmond. Eh. Busher, like you mentioned, did win here before in the Xfinity Series. Pretty decent. Two of the three races. Ninth at Richmond. But most importantly, the difference there is getting eighteen to one. Yeah, same as uh, Chase Elliott. I'd rather go with uh, Chase Elliott, who's been arguably much more consistent over the past couple of weeks. Um, there's still a couple names that we haven't even talked about yet that haven't popped up on the screen that could be good ones. Um, I don't know where Ross Chastain is right there. There we go. So um, he's looking good. He's a, a past winner at this track. Or, or no, I'm sorry. He's not a past winner at the track. He... Uh, da, 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 da. He has two Wait, top fives. Two top fives. Yep. There we go. Yep. Three top tens uh, out of eight Xfinity tries. Um, yeah, so, but what is he doing at twenty-eight to one? I mean, agreed. And he and and he's last week he was actually pretty good. He's got a top five in the, in from six truck series starts at the track too. So this is a guy that's got a lot of experience on this track in both of those feeder series. Is, has had a great. Um, not a great, but uh, he had a pretty decent run last week at Sonoma. So maybe Ross Chastain can come out and, and get a win. And uh, just for good measure, I will throw in Ryan Priest, who is is a former winner at this track. He won in 2017. I think he led 141 laps out of 254 from pole to win. So uh, Ryan Priest there as well. Oh, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think we've talked more about Ryan Priest on this video than he's been talked about in <laughs> All YouTube videos combined this season. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, if you're going to go deep long shots like that, uh, Bowman 45, a uh, couple of uh, top 10s out of three in Xfinity, fourth at Bristol, eighth at Dover. The Richmond result wasn't all that good. But Briscoe, he's won at both Arca and Xfinity, uh, and uh, he's 55 to 1. And McDowell could be pretty good. He's 100 to 1. We know he's been qualifying well, which is going to be important. And he's, I mean, I don't, this might be the, this might be the, he might be the happiest guy actually that they've moved to Iowa because I've, I've never remembered him having this good a stat uh, number at any Xfinity track. He's got seven top tens and eight Xfinity races at Iowa, two top fives and a runner up. His average finish is 6.9 and you get an 100 to one. That's fantastic. Yeah. Again, different series, different car, different time period. Kyle Busch is also a winner at the track. I see him on the screen, 25 to 1. Yep. Um, you know, the only issue with Busch, again, we talked about it last week and, and it kind of proved true. He's just got a lot of uh, drivers that have angst with him on, on the same track. And you're talking about a short track, so they're not going to hesitate to be moving him out of the way. Yeah, Kyle would be if he was uh, doing better. But then again, he wouldn't be getting 25 to 1. Uh, the first two races in Iowa in the Xfinity Series, he was runner-up in the first one. He won the second one, and then that's it. And uh, and he let it combine 293 laps. So it's been a long time, 
but uh, he has had success here. He's got a 1.5 average and, and his two races. He was fourth at Dover, but he didn't, he didn't show anything at Richmond or even Bristol. So I'm sure that, and he, like you said, it's just, uh, I mean, if you're going to think of Kyle, then, then you definitely say, well, no, I'd rather just take Ross Chastain. Um, Absolutely. In that, would... in that number range. Yeah. Yep. Or even go a little bit further if you want. Take some of the ones that we talked about, some of those really deep ones. Priest is sitting there at 150 to 1, by the way. Eric Jones has a couple of uh, truck series wins at this track. So. Uh, AJ is racing. Very... Stenhouse has wins, but. Mm -hmm. that's ricky stenhouse so there you go uh, look at austin Sindrick now down at 55 to 1 because he won a race so and it's not like he won the race uh because he dominated or anything I and mean, if he didn't win that race if he finished third if ryan blaney did not run out of gas austin Sindrick would be 100 to 1 yes he would be so silly Absolutely. okay <laughs> um so what would be your top three hamlin uh is my top choice um probably busher and Ooh. chastain would be my next ones oh wow okay i like it some nice long shot plays there yeah hamlin that is uh you know i i'm, I'm gonna take logano first only because uh, <laughs> i'm not I've gonna heard get, times. i'm not gonna get beat <laughs> by him again in this situation so uh even though eight to one is probably about four points less than it would be if it wasn't for that trend he'd, he'd probably be around 12 to one uh but okay all right so i'll go logano as my top and i guess because of the odds i'll go kozlowski and elliot so very good choices there as well and again there, there's a bunch of choices so i i again i guess the the best tip that we could just give is, is is this is just a week not to go with the favorites it just doesn't make any sense to do that they've, no, no, they've raced here before sort of like i was just doing the golf show for the u.s open and uh the way scheffler's playing he's playing like the way tiger woods did it's like oh Okay, you know who's going to win, right? I mean, he's, he's winning everything that he wants to win. He's never won a U.S. Open, so you know he's going to want to win, so he's going to win. But the one thing you do have to keep in mind is the fact that nobody's ever... I mean, most of these golfers haven't played this golf course that he's playing at. So that should even things out and give the other golfers just as much of an advantage because, hey, he, I don't know. How do you know he's, he's going he's gonna to go there and this is going to be a course that just doesn't suit his eye? You don't know. So that's the thing about this race. You don't know. Uh, they haven't been here in with the cars and the series and all that and the teams. So just, uh, if anything, uh, I, I would definitely wait on Bell or Larson for qualifying. Because you're not going to lose too much on the odds, even if they are, are fast. I can't imagine. I mean, what's Bell going to go down to? If he goes down to 2-1 to one because he's on the pole, then go, go ahead, beat me. You know, because who's going to bet two to one on, on a NASCAR race? Uh, but, yeah, I, I would think if you're going to do that, you definitely have to wait on, on, on qualifying for those two. So, yeah. And like you said, the, the Hamlin odds are not going to get any lower. Like, even if he had qualifies 12, 15 back of the field, probably still going to be about the same. So yeah. uh, whereas if he does qualify in the front row, if, if not put it on pole, then it gets cut in half and you're right at the bell territory, which you don't want to be taken given all the unknowns anyway. And, you know, you know, probably the biggest unknown aside from the fact that it's a completely new track is, is again, that repave. Uh, it's such an odd thing to have just one lane really, that's going to without question have more grip. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I would go ahead and take those long shots now, um, but the, or, or at least the Hamlin, I should say, uh, in terms of uh, as much as Hamlin can be a long shot yep. now, take it now. Um, but aside from that, like you can you can afford to wait to watch practice and qualifying, I think. Let's see what else they've got here. They've got see now. I don't. This is also they've got as the, as the manufacturer odds. They've got Toyota almost even money. And. And, and uh, you know, okay, you've got Bell and Hamlin and Truex, but then you got Ford and Chevy are like two to one. So I don't know and where Ford they come up with these odds. Ford has won uh, 
largely due to uh, Joey Logano, but Ryan Blaney was in there as well. Yeah. Uh, Ford tends to win at the first time visits to tracks. So, yeah, I don't know that Toyota is a shoe in. Yeah, and they don't have any qualifying odds up or, or anything like that. Um, maybe they'll do it later in the week. Uh, who, who, who would you – is there a, is there a driver that does really well in qualifying – that you would think that would would, would qualify well? Mm, Not necessarily. Probably. Nobody sticks out. Uh, the only one I can really point to probably would be like a Larson or a Byron. They have a tendency to be able to get that one lap speed, so maybe lean a little bit more heavily on Larson for that. Okay. They're, Hendrick, just with that team, they're able to set it up much better and much more close to, I think, what they need, what anybody needs. Um right out of the gate versus the other team. So I think there's more of a chance of them hitting it early versus somebody else. And look, I, I would, uh, I would definitely take Larson uh, over bell. And especially if I was going to take same thing with Larson, if I was going to take Larson, you know what? I would just take, take him now. Uh, I can't imagine even Larson's odds are going to get any higher. So yeah, if you want to go with Larson and we've said before, five to one is okay. If, if, if you like some driver, and by the way, he was third at Richmond, led 144 laps, fifth at Bristol, second at Dover, coming off a win and all that. So, yeah, if you, if you want to take Larson, uh, I would take him now as well. And I actually just brought up the poll stats since you asked. Um, this season, there have only been three drivers that have scored multiple polls, and all three of them have scored three each. Uh, first, Kyle Larson. Second, Joey Logano. Oh. Third. Oh, uh, third. Um, who would I say? Three of them? Yep. Oh, Byron? McDowell. Oh, Michael McDowell. McDowell. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> See? There you go. Take him now because it's 100 to 1. See, that's what happened in that. Don't forget, when we talked about this a couple of weeks ago with that uh, race that Cindric won, they were both like around 200 to 1 or something like that. And then, but when the, qualifying but when the, the quali- yeah, when qualifying came up, and I didn't know because I was doing the show. Uh, the qualifying show and I, and I, I didn't, I had, I had no idea what the odds were going to be, but man, did they drop? I mean, you, you lost like 200 points because you didn't take them before qualifying. So yeah, if McDowell's a hundred to one now. And if he qualifies, say on the pole, he's probably going to be like 15 to one. So you better take him now. So, all right. That was good info there. Uh, that's going to wrap it up. Next week is Nashville. Next week is Nashville, yeah. So I'm sorry, New Hampshire. Oh, New Hampshire, then, then Nashville. Okay. Yeah. And that <clears> wraps <throat> up the uh, month, and then we head off to, is it Michigan? What's uh, what's Chicago? The f- oh, that's Chicago, right, the street race. Chicago, Pocono, and Indianapolis. And actually, this week is the first week um, that we are not on Fox. So the Fox run of the schedule is over. We're switching over to USA and NBC from here on out. Oh, wow, USA. USA. You sure? It used to be DC Sports. I thought the US Opens at the USA Network this week. Says USA Network. That's interesting. There's got to be. Do they have two networks? No, right? They don't have like an alternate, do they? I bet they move. I bet you they move the the golf to NBC. Oh, proper. that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. probably what they would do. Yeah, because <clears> I, I was looking at Thursday and Friday. That that would make sense. Yeah. So because they're gonna be the, the they're they're starting at six thirty. I think like the opening tee shot, they're taking advantage of it because they don't have this uh, ability on USA Network. So they're going to have, as uh, soon as the first tee, sh- uh, usually nobody watches the first tee shot at 6.30. They're covered 6.30 till the end of the day. So it's like, wow. I only looked at Thursday <laughs> and Friday. But yeah, it makes sense that NBC would take over on the weekend, of course. So, all right. Well, there you go. They're going to have a banner weekend. Uh, or and and, uh, and and more to come, but especially this weekend with the new race and uh, so forth. So the USA Network should definitely be. Uh, this is a, a big weekend for them. All right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, CJ will have his link to the uh, fantasy report on this race coming up when I post. Uh, do you know what time they're qualifying? Uh, when they post when I, when I post the video for practice and qualifying of this upcoming uh, uh, race on Saturday. So hopefully it'll be early. It, I've seen no reason it shouldn't be early, uh, even though sometimes they do silly things. 
So. Qualifying for the Cup Series is Saturday at 1.05 p.m. Mm. Eastern time. It's okay. All right. So we should have the video up then by about 4 o'clock-ish in that time range. So look out for that. Uh, and uh, we'll give it another try and see how those subscribers go in mystery caution. But look, that's why you want to subscribe on both channels. And as long as you know what we're doing here on both channels, uh, rest assured, uh, these videos will be on either one of them. So that's all that really matters at this point. Uh, CJ, appreciate it as always. And uh, we'll talk again uh, next week. Sounds good. And we'll talk to everybody as well. Don't forget, subscribe, like, share, and let us know uh, what's on your mind, including, of course, uh, like one of our viewers, uh, David Peel. Uh, so, David, let me know if you're, if you're I don't know, maybe the, the other video is the only one you're watching. But if you are watching this one, uh, let me know what, what else, uh, what, I'm, what am I missing? Because uh, I want to know what I'm missing. Uh, because if I'm missing something, then uh, I don't want to miss it anymore. So anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll talk to everybody uh, next week on this show. And then I'll see you guys on Saturday after qualifying and practice.